This is going to be a quick show. Oh, oops. I forgot the camera's running. Hello, folks. Welcome back. I'm the one, the only. I am Hobo Tom. I'm wearing a Macho Man shirt. Definitely a true legend. He's unfortunately no longer with us. But I'm here to talk about SmackDown. Wow. Let's see. Let me adjust the volume here. Ooh, that was good. Yeah, definitely not one of the better SmackDowns. Which is a shame, because SmackDown's been the better of the two WWE shows. Not necessarily tonight. Well, let's talk about some SmackDown. So it starts off, Roman Reigns comes down to open up the show. Um, he calls up Adam Pearce. Oh, he used to line. And I swear, Bruce, Pitt, Bruce Pritchard had to write this. Because I love you. If you know Bruce Pritchard, remember, he was brother of love. So yeah, Roman Reigns, he goes through a whole video package, calls out Adam Pierce, says, don't you think I can choose my own challenger? What's wrong with you? Wait, Adam Pierce is the manager. Of course you're going to choose who, who you wrestle. Yep. Um, so this was a weird show. Uh, it seemed to go, I'll give it this much. A two-hour SmackDown seems to go a hell of a lot quicker than a three-hour three hour long Raw. Even though you're really just talking about an hour difference. SmackDown went by quick. It was, I don't know, just weird. And we have that gauntlet match, so I have the gauntlet match stipulation. Whereas I rank every match and the gauntlet match as a whole. We'll see what happens there. Uh, so to open up, after the opening, we have Apollo Crews and Big E. Remember, Apollo Crews said, I want to be the first person to accept your challenge. Uh, it was actually a pretty good match. Apollo Crews takes over the early part of the match. Uh, Big E, however, gets the advantage. He has a big splash on the apron, like the sixth or seventh hardest part of the ring. Uh, Crews hit a superplex. And then all of a sudden, it's like a double pin. And you're like, wait a second. That's a screwy finish. Might they switch the belt? Might they take the belt off Big E so soon? Or are they going to keep this thing going? We'll see. So um, eventually the ref's like, wait. Your shoulders were down? Your shoulders were down? I don't know what to do. But he's like, yeah, you, you know what? I, I won the match. I'm the champion. And Paul's like, no, I won the match. I think, I forget who it was, but eventually someone... Probably the referee. So you know what? We're gonna restart re restart the match. Um Biggie's like, yeah, you know I beat you. Apollo Cruz slaps the taste out of Biggie's mouth. That was actually really good. And that moment itself is gonna get kinda the uh the reason why I rated this match as I did. Um Biggie went for a big ending, but now that didn't happen, then he went for the stretch muffler. I like that. Biggie's pulling out all his tricks. Eventually, Biggie did hit the big ending. Biggie wins, retains his belt. I don't know. For all the hype and the and the lead up to this match, I figured it would be better. It was just a ham sandwich. We see Sonya Deville backstage. Is Sonya Deville going to be a manager or a general manager? Uh, she talked a little. She talked a little about uh, Adam Pearce about how she had to fight her best friend, and she wants her reinstatement. Wait, boo, Sonya Deville, boo, boo, boo. I'll never go a day. Sonya Deville's here, and I don't boo Sonya Deville. Boo! Yeah, Sonya Deville gets the, gets the infinite boos after I saw that one match and with her and Lacey Evans and again she pinned my princess Kimberly. Boo, Sonya Deville. She will get eternal boos and thumbs down. Um, so yeah, Sonya Deville talking to Adam Adam Pierce. Bianca Belair cut, cuts a promo. 
Uh, the Street Profits start to make their way to the rings. You see the flying solo cups. Someone has to clean that garbage up. That's not good. And Carmella, Car Carmella just looks like such a 50-year-old Florida MILF. It's not even funny. Like, it's, it's actually turning her backstage promos are be, are, look, look like I saw like a Brazers like backstage set. If you're not old enough to know what Brazers is, don't look it up. If you are, if you are old enough, you still don't know what Brazers is. Be warned. Uh, so we, the next match we have the Street Profits taking on Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode. Um, this was actually a, a pretty good match. Um, there was an assisted moonsault that was good to see. A good back and forth between both wrestlers. Um, Ford hit some like flying, some flying splash over the top rope. Ford's amazing. I didn't remember. I don't remember Dawkins doing much in this match. He did get pulled off the ring by Robert Roode at one point. Uh, Dolph Ziggler had Montez Ford, and he went for like the alligator roll, the front face, front face like alligator roll. Again, classic traditional collegiate wrestling. Um, I'm warming up to this match. Um, eventually, after a little bit more back and forth, and some shenanigans by Robert Roode a little bit and Dolph Ziggler, Roode and Ziggler win. I'll tell you what, I was shocked. It's good to see Robert Roode holding the gold back. Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler also have matching gear. That is the magic thing in pro wrestling. If you're uh, put together a tag team, you do not win the belts until you actually have matching ring gear. I guess this was another okay match. Was, this was a this was a little bit better match. Again, it had a little bit more. Again, once you start throwing in collegiate style wrestling, putting the, the front face lock in, the alligator roll. Dolph is again. He has that collegiate background. It, it tugs at my heartstrings when I used to wrestle. In high school, the one year I wrestled in college. <sighs> and he had a surprise switch. I like surprise I like being surprised. This is a cheeseburger match. And then there's more of um Paul Heyman, Adam Pierce, and Sonya Deville backstage. I I boo Sonya Deville, boo, boo, boo. I will always boo Sonya Deville, boo. Um, yeah, boo. I hate to do this to you, boo Adam Pierce for talking to boo Sonya Deville, and and Paul Heyman. You're just Paul Heyman. Um, so there was that, and then there was the Riot Squad with Billy Kay. I'll tell you what. Ruby Riot. She's cute looking. She's giving me that hottie with the little short little pixie haircut. She just looks different, more appealing with that short hair. Um, I do like the fact that her and Liv have matching outfits. Billy Kay still has a big Australian voice. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. She's a Sheila. Because she comes from the land down under. Da -na -da -na. The men and the women go sunder. Da -na -da -na. So I spoke to a man from Brussels. He just smiled at me and offered me a Vegemite sandwich. So he said, Do you come from the land down under? Da -na -da -na. One of these days I'll play that song, or I'll, I'll learn the lyrics to that song. I just know various lyrics. Um. Something about the land on under, rumbling thunder, and a man from Brussels that offered you a Vegemite sandwich. Indeed. That's one of the things. Again, I would like to go to Australia one day. And I, I, I've heard from people, because you actually can buy Vegemite here in parts, or you could in parts of Jacksonville get Vegemite. They say it's terrible. But for the most part, it's like the Australian peanut butter, though. I don't know. Coming from a land of convicts. 
Who knows? I'm sorry, Australia. Australia besides USA. 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 It's my second favorite country. Again, USA. 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 Number one. Australia. Number two. Actually, yeah, Australia's number two. Ireland's pretty where They're like number three. Then Greater Britannia. Sorry, bum slicks. It's like number four. I don't know. They're number five. Germany's number four. Something about them Germans. I don't know. Italians are just weird. Italian women, I've never had good luck with Italian American women. But ah, that's a whole other issue. So yeah, you have the Ride Squad. Again, Ruby Rodriguez looks hot. H. And she's hot. And I'll spell it out for you. H A W T. Hot. Yes. I got that out of my system at least. And maybe a little too much red wine. A little caffeine to follow, baby. Something to hydrate myself. Oh, I should really do that too. I'll do that after the video. Then we have our gauntlet match. Um, normally I'm a big fan of gauntlet matches. Not this particular one though. This was a weird. It was good, bad, and terrible. Like this had all three aspects. It was the good, the bad, and the ugly all at the same time. It was really weird. And whatever I did, I just made my camera freeze. So I'm probably going to get some funky delay. Starts off with Rey Mysterio Jr. and Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn just starts talking. Um, remember, this is a gauntlet match. So I'm going to give this each section its own individual rating. And then I'll give it an overall reading at the very end. Uh, Rey Mysterio takes on Sami Zayn. This li literally goes... Drop kick, 619, frog splash, Rey Mysterio wins. After Sami Zayn tried to cut a promo. This section of the match was a can of soup. Then all of a sudden, Shinsuke Nakamura came in. So now it's Rey Mysterio versus Shinsuke Nakamura. This could be good. Um, really good move set by both. This is definitely a much quicker. <laughs> yeah, it's the pacing of it's different. I won't say quicker match because it's longer, but it's faster paced. Sami Zayn, Rey Mysterio, that was just quick. But with this match, it was really good. Um, Ray, every time you try to do something, Shinsuke had a counter for it. That was good. The, the big knee, the Kinshasa. That was some good stuff. For the most part, a really good match. Again, kind of on the short side. WWE kind of pigeonholed themselves into having a short match. And the fact that I think this whole gauntlet match started with like 45 minutes left. So, yeah. It, like, this was a little bit better. It was a ham sandwich of a match. Could have been a lot better. Yeah. I think they realized that they were crunched for time, though. We'll see. Again, time management, WWE. Time management. Then we had Baron Corbin versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Uh, Corbin replaced Rey Mysterio. Corbin, for the most part, he, he gets in. Starts to ooh, try to beat up Shinsuke Nakamura. Remember, Shinsuke has been in there for at least one whole, comp one whole match. So, again, he wants to get... He's still fairly fresh, though. Um, Shinsuke Nakamura got... Or... Baron Corbin got caught in the post when he went for a diving shoulder tackle. Then Shinsuke Nakamura. Shinsuke Nakamura dodged. Um, on the outside, uh, Shinsuke Nakamura got caught. He tried to jump. He tried to do, like, a double, double axe handle smash. Which, again, I'm always a fan of. On to Baron Corbin. So Baron Corbin caught him. Ramen hint so Shinsuke Nakamura ate the post on the outside. Baron Corbin ate the post on the inside. Eh, tit for tat. I can see that. Um, back in the ring, 
Yuji Nakamura, a second rope kick. Um, Baron Corbin at one juncture of the match caught Shinsuke Nakamura for the deep six. Shinsuke hit a triangle that was countered into a power bomb. Uh, very, uh, Baron Corbin does his little like uh, slide outside around the ring post, back in, and ate, and ate like a kick. I don't even think it was a Kinshasa. I think Shinsuke was shocked. He's like, okay, like the ref is like, okay, this is done now. I'm, it's like, okay, okay, that's it. Shin kick done. Baron done. Baron eat pin. Um, Shinsuke Nakamura won this match. Wasn't bad. It was a cheeseburger match. And then they had a rematch of last week where Shinsuke Nakamura versus Daniel Bryan. This is when it got better, but they these two need to have a 20 minute long, at least 20 minute long WrestleMania match. For it to feel anything good. You've seen too much of Daniel O'Brien. And, and you've seen what he can do in the ring. You've seen what, Shin, Shin, what Shinsuke Nakamura. And AJ Styles could do. In Wrestle Kingdom. In Wrestle Kingdom 10. What they could do for 20 minutes. So you know Shinsuke and Daniel O'Brien. Like in theory they are good friends. They really know each other well. Uh, Daniel O'Brien did petition Shinsuke Nakamura. To come here to the States. But yeah. With this. This shouldn't be part of a gauntlet match. This has to be its own standalone match, for it to be real, to be, for it to be that like flame mignon, the surf and turf level match. Whenever they do things like this, it, it just seems to lessen the impact. It doesn't make it seem as impactful. It doesn't make it seem as meaningful. It's like you're gonna throw Daniel Bryan into this whole mess. May, well, maybe Daniel Bryan was supposed to win this. Uh, yeah, we'll yeah we'll see. we'll see. Uh, so Shinsuke Nakamura versus Daniel Bryan's next. And so this is three competitors. This is Shinsuke's third competitor. He's been in the ring with. Um, then he had a, a quick reverse explode of suplex that looks great. Daniel Bryan definitely knows how to sell that. Daniel Bryan's fresh too, so he can absorb some punishment. He got Shinsuke Nakamura into the half Boston Crab, then a big German suplex. Oh, good German suplex. Ain't nothing like it, folks. It's really good. It's a piece of art to see. Especially the fact that Shinsuke landed, like, literally on his back instead of his neck and head. Kota Ibushi. Yeah. That's not the way to have a long career. Land on the back. That's the way to have a long career. That's why Shinsuke Nakamura enjoys WWE. Because he's not involved in a neck-breaking competition for every match. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Daniel Bryan. Then he goes for his kicks, but again, there's there's never that last yes kick. Not anymore. She's going to come around and uh, hit a flying Jujigatani. Still amazing. The fact that you can get your arms with... <laughs> like, I, I've done it. I've done it, but that's been in an ocean where I'm floating. When you're not floating, you still have to fight gravity and hit a, fl and hit a flying Jujigatani. It's still great. Daniel Bryan countered that with a Juju Katami of his own. Then into the label lock. That was good. Again, he realized that Shinsuke Nakamura has very long, lengthy legs. So Shinsuke was able to get a foot on the rope to force the break. Uh, Daniel Bryan. I don't know what that was. He, like, slipped off of Frankensteiner from the top rope. And I'm just like, Wow. He just slipped, or Shinsuke Nakamura, or I just think he slipped. And Shinsuke Nakamura didn't want to look like a dope Cody Rhodes and just fall through. He's like, yeah. Like, he kind of put his hands up so at least the announcer say, oh, look, Shinsuke Nakamura, like, Daniel Bryan slipped off and he put his, and he put his arms up. It was obvious, but at least he didn't take the really bad sell or the bad dive. The announcers play it off really. Uh, oh, it looks like Shinsuke Nakamura pushed him off him. Or or I think even Corey Gray said, oh, it looks like Daniel Bryan slipped up there. Even more believable. I like that. Keep a little air of believability 
into pro wrestling, and it makes it a lot better. Uh, from there, it was a trade of blows, uh, leg kick. They traded leg kicks, chops. Then O'Brien just starts punching his way. Then he had the running kicks. Shinsuke Nakamura, the sudden impact of the Kinshasa. And then afterwards, they have the handshake. They're like, that was okay. It, it was okay. Again, way too short. It just felt like a rematch of the match they had, I, I want to say, last week. I don't know. I, I'm sorry, guys. This is a ham sandwich. And then Adam Pierce is turning the ring, and you're like, oh, God, no. This is going to be bad. And this is setting up, with the exception of the actual Royal Rumble itself, to be a terrible Royal Rumble, unless something magical happens. Um, she's going to knock more Daniel Bryan, shake hands. That's actually pretty cool. I kind of said, yes, they, they, they need that moment. Again, Shinsuke Nakamura and Daniel Bryan, they really do need a good 20-minute spot in WrestleMania, in SummerSlam, at the Royal Rumble. They need that spotlight. And that's important because that will show you, that will really showcase your skills. Yeah, and a nice 15-minute match on, on SmackDowns, good. I'll take it. But I'll tell you what, it'll be better. It's, just, it's like, you get this little piece of cheesecake. Yeah, it's like this big and skinny. Yeah, that piece of cheesecake's good. I want the whole cheesecake. I want everything. So, yeah, I want to see these two in a good 20-minute long match. At SummerSlam, underneath the big lights with the crowd. Maybe I'm asking too much. Who knows? Um, and then Roman Reigns says, uh, shows up along with Jey Uso and, and Paul Heyman. And they show up. They beat up Shinsuke Nakamura some more. Uh, Shinsuke Nakamura eats a super kick from Jey Uso and then a Superman punch from Roman Reigns. Adam Adam Pierce is just hanging up there. It's like why? Uh, Roman Reigns says, yeah, come on, get in the ring. And then, like, I want to say he just, like, decked him. He punched him right in the face. Or Jay super kicked him. Threw him on top of... Yeah, Jay did, yeah, Jay did something to Adam Cole. Jay dragged... Ad, uh, uh, Roman Reigns knocked Adam Pierce out. Jay dragged him, like, threw him on top of Shinsuke Nakamura. Roman Reigns versus Adam Pearce at Russell. Uh, no. No. If it was a lower level pay-per-view and not one of the big five, mainly that of being the Royal Rumble, yeah, I could kind of see this. Not the Royal Rumble, though. No. Yeah, Adam Pearce is, is... He's not Steven Regal. He's not Shane McMahon. <sighs> Once I saw the super kick hat, the super kick Superman punch, I'm like, glorified finger poke of doom, piece of toast. So overall for that gauntlet match, parts of it were good, parts of it I could have dealt without. I mean, it's been so much better in the past, they've done it the right way in the past. This time around, toast, soup, ham sandwiches. It's just a ham sandwich of a match. And that's how we leave SmackDown. Kind of disappointing, deflating SmackDown. Thankfully, there's still a few more weeks before uh, Royal Rumble to make things right. Um, a couple news and notes. Remember, I have to work tomorrow night, so I'm not going to be catching the Impact Special. Um, I'm not too sure about if I'm going to be doing Hard to Kill either. Only because I might be going to a cookout with a friend. It's my first Saturday off since, like, June. I kind of want to enjoy it and spend it with, like, friends and stuff. I do. Don't get me wrong. My YouTube viewers, I, 
I appreciate you so much. But human being contact and free food and fishing trumps pro wrestling, unfortunately. So again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Um, other than that, next week's going to be the basic normal week. I will make some predictions. And depending on my work schedule, because I actually do have off that, that, that Monday too. I might try and catch the recap of it though. I might do something on Monday. So be worried about that. I might not do a live show, but I might do a little recap show of Impact Hard to Kill. We'll see. I will definitely do a predictions. So next week's full of wrestling. Monday is going to be my um, Raw recap show. Tuesday is going to be my, my live streaming of Impact Wrestling. It is the go-home show t for Hard to Kill. That should be really interesting because I'm Bullet Club for life. For life. Because I'm too sweet. Um, Wednesday is going to be AEW. Thursday is going to be a prediction for Hard to Kill. Friday is going to be a typical SmackDown show. And probably nothing Saturday, Sunday. And maybe a double video show. Where <sighs> Luther King J. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe.